I'm Father Kevin Zubel, a Redemptorist missionary serving in the Denver province. Our most recent Redemptorist general chapter reaffirmed our long commitment to collaborating with partners in mission as we follow the example of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, by preaching the word of God to the poor. Over the past few years, active partners in mission have helped us formalize a vision and plan for welcoming, initiating, and commissioning those who wish to embrace our charism and reflect on their service and ministry in the church in light of redemptorist spirituality. We've developed a roadmap and a program for development of partners in mission that envisions various levels of commitment. To help us all imagine the possibilities of partners in mission, I'm excited to introduce you to three of these partners. Please listen to their stories and see how encounters with Redemptorists changed their lives and how their commitment to follow a Redemptorist way of life is changing ours. Hi, we're John and Diana Davenport from the Tucson Circle of Redemptorist Associates. I'm a convert to Catholicism. I came into the church alone at 14. My family were all atheists and those alive today still are. So I come from a land of the spiritually most abandoned, and I think this is why the Redemptorist emphasis on ministering to the most abandoned feels like home to me. A sermon of Father Peter Connolly's led me to volunteer at Casa Maria Soup Kitchen, run by the Tucson Catholic Worker Community. I help provide food, showers, clothing, and other services to homeless people and families whose finances are just stretched too thin. Urged on by another associate, Angela Schneider, who is the president-elect of the National Christ Child Society and fully supported by our rector, Father Paul Curry, I was able to set up monthly meetings at our parish to make sandwiches and collect needed items for Casa Maria. But the sandwich meetings didn't benefit only the poor and abandoned of Casa Maria. People from both sides of the political and religious divide that is devastating our country were able to come together in friendship to help others who needed them most. It got me thinking that maybe some of our older parishioners were also among the spiritually abandoned because age and infirmities kept them from sharing the fruits of their faith outside their own community. Making hundreds of sandwiches and gathering other needed supplies for Casa Maria gave them a viable way to provide help to homeless, hungry, desperate people. Unlike Diana, I am a cradle Catholic. And to be honest, I had pretty much left the missionary business of the church to the professed professionals. That began to change after Diana and I began attending Mass at the Redemptorist Retreat Center in Tucson, Arizona in 2014. It was our first encounter with the Redemptorist. What initially attracted me to them were their outstanding homilies. But what led me to want to become more and more involved was the undeniable fact that there was just something very, very good going on at the RRC. That something good turned out to be the Redemptorist living commitment to Jesus's mission to serve the most abandoned. So along with 25 others, Diana and I became part of Tucson's first associate circle in January, 2018. Why was that such a big deal? By becoming Redemptorist associates, we became partners in mission with the Redemptorists. Their mission to serve the most abandoned became ours too. I found myself seeking and wanting to serve the abandoned around me, and it turns out they're not very hard to find. I drove asylum seeking families from a local shelter to the bus station to connect them with their sponsors. I made sandwiches for the homeless. I helped to record and post masses for those who could no longer attend Mass during the pandemic. And it wasn't just me. There were 25 of us doing things we never expected we might be doing and enjoying every moment. 
Well, is the formation of a Redemptorist Associate Circle worth the effort? I can't think of anything more worthwhile. Thank, Thank you. you. Barnes from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a lay missionary of the Most Holy Redeemer, a partner in mission with the Redemptorists. I grew up 25 miles south of St. Louis, Missouri, just a few blocks from a small historic town on the Mississippi River. I was baptized at St. Joseph's Church in Kimswick, Missouri, just a few weeks after I was born. Our family life was centered around church and parish and all of the happenings at the school. There were many large families in our community, and ours was one of them. I'm the second of eight children, and we all attended St. Joseph's grade school, which had also been attended by my father. We were very involved in this rural country parish. It was a strong, tight-knit community with a lot of German and Irish families. How did I learn of the Redemptorists? My first connection with the Redemptorists was through my grandfather, Francis. He was a grade school classmate of Father Noor Muckerman, and they were lifelong friends. Father Noor Muckerman was also the officiant at my parents' wedding. But my first probably real memory of the Redemptorists or recollection was when they came to tell us about Ligurian Magazine at Sunday Masses at our church. I attended the local Catholic high school, and the fall after I graduated, I applied for a job as a copier room attendant at Liguri Publications, and I got the job. <laughs> During my first couple of years, I worked in the mail room. My guess is there were about 10 Redemptorists working there at that time. Father Dan Lowry was the rector and publisher. Father Walt Halberstadt worked in the business operations. Father Norm Muckerman was the editor of Ligorian. Father George Ford oversaw Ligorian preaching and the Roadmen, and Father Pat Kaler and Father Jim Higgins were writers. Some of the people working at Ligori at the time I started in 1981 had been there since the beginning in 1947. The culture at Ligori Publications then and today fosters a deep commitment to the mission and the ministry of the Redemptorists, and there are mutual understanding and respect shared between the professed and the laity. Working side by side with missionaries changed my perception of priests, brothers, and sisters, and other religious. I learned to see them more as human beings, always willing to roll up their sleeves and to do what the day demands. Whether writing an article for the magazine, packing books in the warehouse, doing the accounting, cutting the grass, or ministering to the scrupulous, they were and are dedicated to the mission of spreading the good news to the poor and abandoned. And when I say they, I mean both the laity and the professed. I've not only been professionally educated by the Redemptorists in my career at Ligori, that's also where my adult spiritual formation has taken place. I like to say it was by osmosis. I didn't always seek the spiritual path, but it sought me. I've learned about the Redemptorists of the past and present through our publications, and it was natural for me to read everything that I was assigned. In the late 1990s, I was invited by a co-worker, Terry Matz, to come and meet a group of people in St. Louis who regularly gathered for dinner and prayer. I was aware that another co-worker, Alicia von Stamwitz, was also part of the group. So one evening, after rollerblading at the nearby park, I joined the group at Domus Day House, and there I met Brother Dan Korn, Dave Worthman, Craig Franklin, Mike Thomas, and others. We prayed together in a small chapel and then had dinner together in the dining room, which was unlike anything I had ever been a part of before. Very, very <laughs> unusual for this cookie cutter girl. So and at, din at dinner, we talked about everything redemptorists and what was going on with the congregation and happenings around the world. And really it was just like being with family members. From 2006, to 2009, I was part of the North American Commission for Partnership and Mission, 
and was part of the team who developed and produced the booklet Living Redemptorist Spirituality, which is now in its second edition, and intended primarily as a resource for those who are interested in learning more about the meaning of Redemptorist Spirituality. Those were difficult times for, and but they were also developing times for partnership and mission. There was a lot going on behind the scenes and there was a lot brewing during that time. Little did we know. What I find empowering about being a partner in mission is that by sharing my story and my history with the Redemptorists, I have an opportunity to foster greater collaboration and deeper partnership with the laity in the future. I think that my simple story can help illustrate that partnership isn't scary or intrusive. It is truly everyone benefiting from mutual commitments, whether through mission mission or ministry. I'm empowered that I can continue to evangelize and to share the good news with the poor in my professional ministry by continuing to offer my gifts and talents through the work that I do. I want to continue to share in the spirituality, the prayer life, and the friendships of this family. I've been formed to be fruitful in my collaboration and I desire to continue that. This is my heart home and I love it here. We're grateful to John, Diana, and Wendy for generously sharing their stories and for their commitment to our redemptorist spirituality and charism. They've helped us see how the charism to preach the word of God to the poor and others who live on the margins can be more fruitful and expansive when the laity walk with us as partners in mission. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you and your service to our church.